So you don't understand adding curves, not a problem. Add to curve lets you add curves to an edge by left clicking. But unlike doing this with point action, edge action curves for some reason aren't really connected. So you cannot do your normal curve stuff like chains and tubes with them. But what it can do really well is bevel. If you right click on a curve, you will get the exact same options that you saw in point actions. And they work exactly the same way. You can choose from doing nothing, delete the curve, or make a bevel. The rows modifier determines how many segments emerge from the bevel. It defaults to single but you can also choose between two four and eight segments this area here determines the pattern of segmentation linear means a segment is divided equally sharp pushes most of the segments towards the edges and soft pushes most of the segments to the middle and if you want a custom distance you can decide that here edge align allows you to make a clean cut from one edge to another if you left click this edge and left click on this one you'll see it flattens everything in between if you ever need to reset the first point just press spacebar as usual normally you would use this on the edges that are closest to the corner but you can technically do it from farther away just keep in mind that the walls might not follow the edges while left click dragging you can expand the alignment outwards and the shape of the expansion is determined by the buttons here and the direction of the expansion is controlled under the modifiers here for now let's just worry about the shape the easiest one to understand is the straight line if we click and drag it out you can see that it tries to expand in the shape of a straight line as opposed to a circle which expands in a much rounder shape in order here is what they all look like Bezier curve, arcs, small round corners, spline, arcs and line, tight round corners, circle, round corners, and straight lines. Now at the bottom you get to change the direction the expansion happens, so just for reference this is what it looks like by normal default. Usually you can just left click drag to control the expansion, but if you would rather it automatically snap to a specific amount, you can set that here. Now when you left click it will not be able to drag and adjust. It will jump to the set amount that you picked over here. Instead it will just jump to the amount you set when you left click. If you activate a line to target, instead of expanding out it will expand towards the area it intersects. If you you turn on additive area it will collapse in on itself towards the middle and make a capital B and constant width just tries to keep the space in between each segment as equal as possible edge bevel simply turns the edge loop you click on into a beveled area edge loop complete means it will follow the edge loop all the way around the object completely edge loop partial means it will bevel everything until it reaches the point that is not connected to four edges so if we click here you can see that every point is connected to four edges so it goes all the way around but if we click here these points right here only have three edges connected to them, so that is where it stops the bevel. Poly loop is very similar to edge loop complete, but instead of beveling the edge you click on, it bevels the edge perpendicular to the one you click on. All the other bevel options are the same as usual, the number of segments you want each bevel to have is controlled here. You can have one row, two rows, four rows, or eight rows. Linear edge means the space between each segment is equal. Sharp edges move most of the segments towards the edge, which can be better seen in subdivision. And soft edges have most of the segments towards the middle, which again can be easier to see in subdivision. And last, you can set a custom segment distance if you want over here. Edge bridge is an amazing tool that fills in the space between edges. If target is set to edge and you left click two different edges, it will close them off with a face. As usual, the space bar is used to reset the first edge. But the fun starts when target is set to two holes. This tool can connect just about any two holes you give it. If you left click one of the edges, then left click drag the second edge, moving the mouse left and right will raise the bridge, and moving the mouse up and down will increase the number of edge loops in between. You can do it with two holes that are on the same row, two holes that are in different rows, and even two holes that are in different rows and have completely different shapes. This is an excellent tool whenever you need to connect two different objects together and you don't want to ruin the topology. You can even connect two empty flat shapes together to quickly make things like skirts, blouses, and dresses. Pixelogic, ZBrush, and Danny Mech both have excellent tutorials on how to do that if you want to know more. Links in the description. But here's how this tool works. This area here controls the shape of the bridge. In order, the shapes are spline, arcs and line, tight round corners, circle, round corners, straight lines, arcs, small round corners, and lines. The modifiers at the bottom give you some extra control over the bridge area. Interactive curvature means that you get to drag and decide how tall the connection of the bridge is. Optimal curvature means that ZBrush decides how tall the bridge should be in order to give you the smoothest curve. Half curve means it will set the height of the bridge to half of the optimal. Interactive resolution means that you get to control how many edge loops the bridge has by left click dragging. Optimal resolution means that ZBrush decides how many edge loops you should have to get the smoothest curve. Minimum resolution just means that ZBrush will use 
use as few edge loops as possible in order to connect the two holes. Usually it'll polygroup by normals, but if you want every other loop to be its own colored polygroup, set this to polygroup rows. Polygroup flat means the entire bridge will be a single color. Pivot on hole center means ZBrush will automatically try and curve the bridge around the average of the holes, but if you want to manually change the pivot to center around a specific edge, you can try and do that here. But in my opinion, usually the default gives you the best results. And auto align edges is very similar. The default is usually what you want, but if you want to try and align the bridges based on the edges you click, you can try and do that here. Close bridge. If target is set to concave hole and you left click an open edge, it will automatically try and fill the empty space. But if target is set to convex hole, that is when a bunch of options will show up. If you left click drag an edge now, moving the mouse left and right controls the height and moving the mouse up and down controls how many edge loops it has. The shape is controlled here and in order, here is what they all look like. Spline, arcs and line, tight round corners, circle, round corners, straight lines, arcs, small round corners, and one line. Now let's take a look at the modifiers. Converge at center means the whole thing closes at a point in the middle. Converge to edge means the peak of the hole is positioned in the middle of the edge you clicked on. And converge to point means the peak of the hole is positioned closest to the point of the edge you clicked on. Interactive curvature means you can left click drag to change the height of the peak. Optimal curvature means ZBrush automatically chooses the height for you, but you can still drag and control the amount of poly loops. And if you want a specific height of the peak, you can control that over here. The higher the value you the higher the peak. Interactive resolution means you can drag click the amount of edge loops you want. If you change it to optimal resolution though, ZBrush will decide the number of edge loops for you. And if you need a specific number of edge loops, let's say for example you set this to 8, that means when you left click it'll create 8 edge loops when closing your hole. 360 twist means as you left click drag it will twist your topology on the way up. And again if you want to twist a specific amount like maybe 180, you can set that here. Polygroup columns means each vertical column will get its own polygroup. Polygroup row means each new horizontal row will get its own polygroup instead. And polygroup flat means it will keep all polygroups the same color. Collapse edge. If you left click an edge, it will collapse the point closest to your mouse to the next point. If you hold left click, you'll be able to switch the direction back and forth. Polyloop does the exact same thing, but instead of collapsing to a single point on the edge, it merges the entire edge loop. And hole will merge an empty loop into a single point. Crease edge. When target is set to edge, it will crease whatever edge you left click. If you pick edge loop complete, it will crease the entire edge loop around the object. Edge loop partial will crease every point on the edge loop as long as the point is connected to four edges. So here you can see that every point here is connected to four edges, which means if we click here, the edge loop will follow the entire loop. But these points right here are only connected to three edges, so that is where the creasing will stop. Poly loop is like edge loop, but instead of creasing the edge loop you click, it will crease the edge loop that is perpendicular to the one you click on. Delete edge. If you left click an edge, it will simply delete that edge. If target is set to edge loop complete, it will remove that entire loop. And if target is set to edge loop partial, it will delete every edge until it reaches a point that's only connected to three edges. Do nothing. Set edge to do nothing anytime you don't want to accidentally click on an edge. So if you only want to make adjustments to faces or you only want to make adjustments to points, just set edge mode to do nothing. Edge extrude lets you left click to drag out a new edge. While dragging, if you move edge near another point, it will try and snap together. If you tap shift, it will drag the edge out so that it's flat with the area it started on. And if you tap shift again, it will drag out the edge at an angle that is perpendicular to the one you started. And if you hold control from that point, it will snap that distance to a new edge loop as you drag away. So if you drag out a little, hold control and keep dragging out, it will snap extrude a lot. But if we drag out here, then hold control and keep dragging out, it will snap extrude a lot bigger. Now here you can see that we have a few targets and it's kind of confusing, but here's how they work. It defaults to edge, which just means that when you left click, it drags out a single edge. Edge poly loop means instead of dragging out a single edge, it will drag out an entire side. And poly loop means it will extrude the entire loop. Mesh border pretty much functions the same way as poly loop. Now if you were in standard mode, you can actually switch to edge loop by tapping the alt key. And once you're in edge loop mode, if you hold the alt key, it will activate polygroup mode. So normal edge, tap alt for edge loop, and hold alt for poly loop. And if you tap alt again, it goes back to edge. Now if you click edge poly loop, it will flip the order. So if you're dragging out this edge and you tap alt, it will go straight to poly loop mode instead. But if you hold the alt key, now it will activate the edge loop. But again, the standard target is usually the one you want. Also, while you are holding alt, you can do all your normal shifting 
and control options to snap and create new loops if you want. Extend surrounding faces just means the edge goes where your mouse goes. Regular just extrudes things in a direction that has more to do with geometry and math and is a lot harder to control. I do not recommend using it. Remember how we could tap shift to go from free drag, perfectly flat drag, and perpendicular drag? Yeah, well, you can manually pick those here if you want. So free lets you go in any direction, planar means no matter what you do, it will stay flat with the original surface, and perpendicular will be at a 90 degree angle from the original. All right, free sides. This is best understood when you force extrusions to be perfectly flat with the original angles. Free means you can drag your extrusions sideways, but when you set to extend, you will no longer be able to change direction. Parallel is very similar to extend, and taper allows you to change the direction between the two points that get extruded. This is pretty useful when you combine it with edge loop. Single, num, and row signs are what's connected to when you press control. Single means by default it drags out a new single edge. When you set to num row, and if it's set to something like 5, it's going to drag out 5 new segments. And row size just lets you keep dragging out to extend. How often it extends depends on the size here. The smaller the number, the smaller the segments. Generally, I always keep things in free move, but if you want some more snap into surface, you can pick that here. Smart attraction will snap your edge to another edge when it gets close. Normal attraction is a little weaker, and no attraction means it won't snap at all. And from what I've tested, force symmetrical will try and keep things symmetrical when you extrude in multiple edges at the same time, but if you don't really care for that, you can turn that off here. Extrude edge faces lets you left click drag a new face in whatever direction you click. Normally, it will smooth drag out wherever your mouse is, but you can set it to snap every 15 degrees like this, or you can have a custom amount that you want it to rotate by. For example, if it's set to 45 degrees, you can pick that here, and it'll snap at every 45. Edge loop complete will extrude an entire loop. Edge loop partial will extrude from every point that is connected to four edges. So down here, it will pivot the whole loop, but if we click up here, these two points only have three edges connected, so the loop will stop at these points. Polyloop Island will extrude every point that belongs to the edge loop you clicked on that is also the same color. So if we click on blue, you can see that all the blue edges will be extruding. But if we click on green, now only the green edges will be extruded. And when we set to polyloop, you will see, depending on where you click your mouse, a pointer will glow up, down, left, or right. If you left click, it will extrude a new edge loop that is parallel to the direction that the arrow was glowing. So here you can see that it's pointing to the left, so the extrusion will be horizontal. But if the arrow was pointing up, then the extrusion will be vertical. Extrude move is similar to extrude. If you left click an edge, you can drag a new edge out. If you hold control, you'll be able to start to drag out extra segments. The earlier you hold control, the smaller the segments will be. By default, you'll drag out a single edge, but with edge loop, you'll drag out the whole edge. And with poly loop, you'll drag out the entire loop around the object. This will let you extrude from a single hole in the object, but when you set things to mesh border, it will extrude from every hole in the object. While in default mode, you can access the other modes by tapping Alt. If you left click and tap Alt while grabbing an edge, you will switch to edge loop. And if you hold Alt from there, you'll switch to poly loop. And poly loop does the exact opposite. If you tap Alt while grabbing an edge, it will switch to poly group. And if you hold Alt from there, you will switch to edge loop. Single row means you will extrude a single edge when left clicking. If you set num rows to five and then left click, you will drag five segments out instead of one. If you are set to row size, you will expand repeating segments depending on the size that you set. The smaller the number, the more segments you'll get. I've never needed to adjust free to move or force symmetrical, but smart attraction just means the ability to snap to another edge when you get close. If you turn it off, things won't snap together anymore. Insert action lets you left click to create a new edge loop on the edge you click. If you hold shift, it will straighten the lines, and if you hold alt, it will delete the edge loop you click instead. When target is set to multi-edge loop, and you click on an edge, it will create a new loop, and if you drag up and down, you'll be able to increase the amount of loops. If you want a precise number of new loops like eight, just set it right here. And the next time you left click an edge, you will see eight loops. It defaults to zero specific elevation, which means you can't drag left or right to expand, but if you want to be able to expand by dragging, set it to interactive here. Smooth elevation adds curvature to every other loop parallel to the one you click. These options control the shape of the expansion and in order they are spline, radial, linear, and flat. These options control the direction of the expansion. The default is per polygon normal, which just expands the whole thing out. But clicked normal expands everything in the direction of the face you clicked. And average normal is just based off math, combining each normal in the poly loop you click. Alternate polygroup means every other loop is grouped. Same polygroup means that all the new groups are the same color. And keep polygroup keeps the colors the same for all. Edge inset allows you to insert an edge when you left click. Whatever size you set for your last inset is the size it will automatically 
apply the next time you left click on a new face. If you tap out while dragging, you will change the color of the polygroups. The default target is a single edge. Complete edge loop goes all the way around. Partial edge loop stops when a point is only connected to three edges. And poly loop, which works in a direction perpendicular to the one you click. Center and border means you got a new center and a new border. Border means you only get the border. And center means you only get the center. Inset region connects the faces that are connected to the edge you clicked. If you turn it off, the faces stay separated. Equidistance means the border is the same size all around. Standard has a slightly different border proportion and legacy won't change the polygroup color of the border. No size limit means you can shrink to whatever size you want. Default size limit means it won't let you get smaller than this. And custom size limit allows you to manually set the size to whatever you want. Default equidistance snap just means it will try to keep everything as uniform as possible. And if you ever start to get triangles that you don't want, I've heard if you select custom and kick this up all the way, it might solve your problems. But the default is usually all you need. Edge mask lets you mask an edge by left clicking it. If you hold alt, you will unmask the edge instead. Edge loop complete will mask an entire edge loop around the object. Edge loop partial will mask an entire edge loop until it reaches points that are only connected to three edges. And poly loop will mask a loop that is parallel to the edge you clicked. Edge move. Left click an edge to move it. Technically, if you hold shift while you move, you can move it perfectly along the X, Y, or Z axis, but it's kind of hard to control. But yeah, that's how it works. Move auto radius is like moving one edge loop at a time. If you hold shift, you'll be able to slide up and down in perfect directions, but the farther away from where you click, the weaker the move is gonna be. And if you hold alt, it will expand inside and out. Edge loop partial does the exact same thing, except, as usual, if you click on a loop, the effect will stop when it reaches a point that is only connected to three edges. Move brush radius just moves edge loops based on the brush size. As usual, left click to move an edge loop, hold shift to slide it perfectly along the surface, and hold alt to expand it inwards and outwards. Edge loop complete targets the entire edge loop around the object. Edge loop partial does the same thing with the exception of trying to avoid any point that is only connected to three edges. And poly loop will affect a poly group loop perpendicular to the edge you click. And again, all of these can be combined with the shift and alt controls. Move brush infinite radius just means it will apply the full weight of the movement to the entire edge loop all around the object. Just the whole loop. Forget the camera, forget the brush radius, just moves the whole thing. As usual, you hold shift to slide across the surface and hold alt to expand inward and outward. Edge loop complete just grabs the whole loop. Edge loop partial does the same thing, except when it comes to a point that's only connected to three edges. And poly loop grabs the entire loop perpendicular to the edge you clicked. Poly group. If you hold left click and tap alt, you'll be able to change the color of that row. When target is set to overwrite and you left click on an edge, it will turn every face perpendicular to that edge a new color. And it won't care what the old color was, everything is just gonna be the same new color. But if you change target to additive, it's gonna give every polygon in that loop a new color, but also take into consideration the old color. So basically, if you wanna make an entire loop the same color, set it to overwrite, but if you wanna make everything a new color and kinda keep the distinction between the the old colors, set it to additive. QMesh allows you to left click an edge and drag out new edges. If you drag out multiple edges close together, they will snap to each other. If you hold shift, you'll create a new floating face. If you hold control, you'll simply move the selected face forwards and backwards. And if you tap alt, you'll change the polygroup color of your extrusion. Edge targets a single edge. Edge loop complete targets the entire loop around the object. And edge loop partial does the same thing until it reaches a point that's only connected to three edges. Polygroup island only targets the edges around a particular color. So if we left click on a face that is colored in blue, only the blue edges will get Q-meshed. Same thing if we click on a green polygroup instead. And poly loop applies the Q-mesh to every face that is perpendicular to the edge that you clicked. Full step means when two edges get close to each other, they snap together in a single step. If you change it to half step, and we start to drag this edge close to another, you'll see the snap happens in two parts instead. One, two, one, two. And quarter step just means the snap happens in four parts instead of two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Straighten just means that you can smoothly left click drag your extrusion out. 15 degrees means it will snap every 15 degrees as you drag out. And custom allows you to manually control the pivot rotation. So if it's set to 45, it will snap at every 45 degrees as you drag. And supposedly this affects the strength of fusion detection, but when I change these settings, I honestly don't notice any difference in function. So I recommend just leave it on default. But if you know what it does, let me know in the comments below.
problem. Edge scales lets you left click an edge and change its size. If target is set to edge loop, it'll scale the entire loop around the object. If you set it to edge loop partial, it'll do the same as edge loop, but stop when it reaches a point that is only connected to three edges. And poly loop applies the scale to all faces that are perpendicular to the edge you clicked. Edge slice allows you to left click an edge, and if you left click another edge, it will create a slash all the way through. From this point on, every time you left click, it will keep connecting the edges, and of course, you can press spacebar to reset the first edge. You can drag select to make a precision slice, as you can tell, every time you slice, it's going to be creased. But if you don't want the crease, just set it to uncrease, and now every time you do the slice, nothing will be creased. Edge slide lets you left click to slide an edge along a surface. If you're on edge, you'll target a single edge. If you're an edge loop, you can target the whole loop around the object. And if you want, you can hold shift in order to move the edge while you slide it. And as usual, edge loop partial is the same as edge loop, but it stops affecting points that are only connected to three edges. Edge spin. Left click on an edge in order to spin it around. This is an easy way to rotate what points the edge is connected to. Edge split lets you left click on an edge and drag a new point that intersects it. If you hold alt, it will merge the closest point to it into a single point. Edge stitch lets you left click on a hold in order to close it. Click your first edge, click your second edge, and ZBrush will do the rest. You can close the same hole in different ways, so depending on the edges you click and in what order, depends on how the hole will be closed. Edge swivel. If target is set to edge loop and you left click on an edge, it will swivel that edge around a pivot. Where the pivot is depends on the face your mouse was hovering over when you left clicked. So if this face is glowing red, then the pivot point will be here, but if this face is glowing red, then the pivot point will be there. It also also works for partial edge loops too, so if you click on an edge that has points that are only connected to three edges, it will stop the swivel at those points. And if target is set to single edge, it will look like a normal expand movement control, but that is because it's trying to swivel from two points at the same time. For this target to work properly, you have to click on an edge that is surrounded by open faces. So if we delete a few faces and then click this edge, you will see it swiveling like so. Edge transpose allows you to mask and move things around with the gizmo in one click. Single edge will target the edge you clicked. Edge loop complete will mask everything except the edge loop you clicked. Edge loop partial does the same thing until you reach a point that is only connected to three edges. And poly loop will mask everything except for all the faces that are perpendicular to the edge you clicked. Edge unweld lets you separate edges from the object. If target is set to edge and you left click, you'll be able to start cutting out chunks of the object with the edges. If target is set to edge loop, it will separate the whole object by the loop. As usual, edge loop partial does the exact same thing Except if you click an edge that has points that are only connected to three edges, the effect will stop. And poly loop will target the loop that is both perpendicular to the edge you clicked and closest to the point you clicked. Hope that helps, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.